Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited that you guys are here and I hope that you're having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video, you guys, has been so highly requested and rightfully so because I feel like this is all that anybody is talking about lately since the Netflix docuseries on the Cecil Hotel and the disappearance of Elisa Lamb dropped. And I am so excited to talk about this with you guys because I have spent quite literally nearly morning tonight for the past couple of days, if not the past week, researching this case for you guys to dive into the disturbing history of the Cecil Hotel and the disappearance of Elisa Lamb. Now I'm sure at one point or another, you guys have heard of the disappearance of Elisa Lamb. At one point, it was all anybody was talking about on social media, and I actually wanted to cover the case a few years ago, but I felt like so many people had covered it that it wasn't necessary for me to give my two cents in it as well. However, <laughs> that was until I watched the recent Netflix docuseries called Crime Scene, The Vanishing at the Cecil Hotel, and realized there is so much more to the hotel than I even imagined. So I have to make a video on this. I have done so much research on the Cecil Hotel in the recent days that I want to start out first and foremost by diving into the history of the Cecil Hotel because it's a lot darker than even I realized. I mean, I always knew that there was something going on there, but wow, there is, there's a lot more to this hotel. So in this video, it's probably going to be a lengthy one. We're going to dive into the history of the Cecil Hotel, all the previous, well, not all, but the major previous tragedies at the Cecil Hotel. And then we're going to get into the Elisa Lamb case and dissect that talk through all the different theories, the evidence, and what the final verdict was. So with that being said, let's begin by diving into the beginning of the Cecil Hotel. So the Cecil Hotel is known to many as the deadliest hotel in LA, filled with crime, death, in unsolved mysteries. The Cecil Hotel was built in 1924 with 700 guest rooms and 14 stories. The hotel lobby was designed to attract guests and higher class clientele. And initially, that is what it attracted. On June 19th, 1926, there will be the first of many deaths. A man named William McKay died of natural causes within his room, and while it was of natural causes, it was the first of what would become many tragedies within the hotel. In February of 1927, a long-term resident of the Cecil Hotel named John Cronau would be arrested of robbery inside of the hotel. Like he was arrested in the hotel, not of robbery in the hotel, if that makes sense. And in April of 1929, a woman named Dorothy Robinson was taken from the hotel to a hospital as she had overdosed on barbiturates. In 1929 came the beginning of the Great Depression and the area surrounding the Cecil Hotel became known for a ton of shady business. People were resorting to shady activity in all its forms and the Cecil Hotel pretty much found itself at the center of this. The area surrounding the hotel would take on the name Skid Row. The area surrounding the Cecil Hotel became infamously known as Skid Row. It's one of the poorest areas in the country and there's an overwhelming amount of homeless people. It's, it's really honestly quite sad. Slowly but surely the clientele of the Cecil Hotel began to change and what was once expected to be a stop for a higher class clientele became a budget friendly stop for tourists. In August of 1931, a man named George Ford was arrested within the Cecil Hotel for attempting to sell a mass amount of drugs. And basically news was traveling fast that the hotel was a place where people were up to no good. But that wasn't the worst of what would come in the Cecil Hotel. On 
Unfortunately, arrests wouldn't be the only thing that the hotel would become notorious for. There was an overwhelming amount of people taking their own lives within the Cecil Hotel, and even more specifically, many of them were jumping out of the hotel windows. So much so, people started to wonder if there was something going on with the hotel itself and not necessarily the people within it. Because I actually read on one occasion, one of the people who had jumped out of the hotel window their spouse had no idea why that would have happened and believed that, that was completely out of character for them. So very strange things began happening and beyond that, there was a lot of tragedy. But the events didn't stop there. The hotel would quickly become known for murder and the very first murder case is one that is absolutely disturbing. In September of 1944, 19-year-old Dorothy Purcell started to give birth in her hotel room in the Cecil Hotel. Now it said that she had no idea that she was pregnant, she was just experiencing a lot of pain, she went to the bathroom and then gave birth to a child. Now remember I said it was said she had no idea that she was pregnant. And so when she gave birth to this child, it said that she assumed the baby was a stillborn and decided to resolve the problem and threw the child out of the hotel window, which the child was not stillborn. That was one of the first of many killings within the Cecil Hotel, which is awful because it's to do with a newborn baby. Some even claim that Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, was seen drinking at the Cecil Hotel prior to her death though others do not believe that to be true. But even eerier, the serial killer, the Night Stalker, was a resident at the Cecil Hotel for a few weeks, using it as a home base, so to speak, even dumping his clothes into the hotel dumpsters after. And he wasn't the only one. There were other killers and serial killers who stayed within the hotel too. As you guys could see from the very beginning, the Cecil Hotel had a dark ambiance and history to it. So with all of that being said, let's get into the Elisa Lam case. So she peers out the doors, runs back in, and then presses several buttons. Strange behavior, but what happened afterward is even more bizarre. In Los Angeles, fire crews pulled Lam's body from the hotel's water tank on the roof, on the roof. Elisa Lam was a 21-year-old Canadian. She was looking to see more of the world and expand her horizons, so she headed on a solo trip to the West Coast to see as much of it as she could. Elisa enjoyed blogging and sharing her inner thoughts. She had a Tumblr account where she would share many of her feelings and at times her dark thoughts. On January 26, 2013, Elisa Lam arrived to Los Angeles and would check into the Cecil Hotel on January 28th. Now, I do want to say that in 2011, the Cecil Hotel was renamed Stay on Main, but I'm just going to call it the Cecil Hotel for this entire video. Now, initially, Elisa was assigned a shared girl's room on the fifth floor, but would have to be relocated due to odd behavior towards her other female roommates. It was said that she was writing handwritten notes and placing them on her roommates' beds, telling them to leave and get out, and she was also requiring a password, like a verbal password, from those who were trying to get into the room that they were sharing with her. So the hotel deemed that it was best that Elisa was moved to a room that she would have on her own, rather than sharing one with the other girls. Now, every single day of Elisa's travels, she was checking in with her family until one day, she suddenly stopped. Elisa was meant to check out of the hotel on February 1st, but she hadn't, and her family hadn't heard from her, so she was reported missing. Now, Elisa Lamb was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression and was on medications for both. But despite that, her family said that disappearing like this wasn't in her nature and they were immediately concerned for her well-being. The investigators went into Elisa's room to look for any signs or evidence, but they realized that the hotel staff had already removed her belongings from the room. Because she hadn't checked out and had left all of her things in the room, the hotel staff had removed it as per protocol and they were to hold on to it for the next 30 days. Now, staff of the hotel says that people commonly would leave things behind in rooms. They would hold on to it for 30 days and once it was claimed, it would be returned and if not, it would be disposed of. So since Elisa hadn't checked out and had left all of her things, they had removed her items from the room. Elisa's laptop, wallet, 
prescription medications, and everything that she'd brought with her was left behind in the room. It did not appear that she had left intentionally. The room didn't show any signs of foul play, and those who had removed her things from it said that the room was messy as in it was lived in, but there was no ransacking and nothing out of the ordinary. But despite that, investigators felt like something was very off and very wrong. Now they investigated the hotel the best they could. They were searching every possible place they believed in that moment in time Elisa could have went, and they even brought scent tracking dogs into the hotel. At one point, they traced her scent to the fire escape, and they even brought the dogs up to the roof but they weren't able to follow any particular scent of Elisa and nothing was picked up. And I do want to reiterate, they brought the scent tracking dogs up to the roof, they investigated the roof, they investigated everywhere they could, and the only place the dogs supposedly picked up any scent of Elisa was towards the fire escape outside. But that was it. They couldn't find her anywhere to them in that moment in time. It was as if she disappeared without a trace. Eventually, they would release the last known footage of Elisa, which was the elevator footage. Now, this footage was very, very eerie. People immediately noticed that Elisa's behavior was off. Some thought it seemed as though Elisa was hiding from someone that was after her, and others thought that she was under the influence. Some even thought she was playing the paranormal game, the elevator game. But something very strange about this video to many was that the elevator door didn't seem to close at all throughout the entire video. And Elisa kept on pressing a ton of buttons. She moves her hands in a very strange way and displays very odd behavior. Eventually, Elisa leaves to the left of the elevator and doesn't return. However, now the elevator door shuts and then proceeds to reopen and close. The search for Elisa continued and people had absolutely no idea what to make of the case. But unfortunately, 19 days after her disappearance, Elisa Lam was found within the hotel's water tank on the roof. The discovery came after hotel guests began complaining over the smell, the color, and the taste of the hotel water, which just gives me absolute chills. And upon looking further into it, they found within the hotel water tank Elisa's decomposing body. Elisa was naked within the water tank with her clothes floating around her. So now that we know the discovery of Elisa Lam, let's get into the different theories around her death. The case gained mass amounts of theories. Everybody was talking about the Elisa Lam case. They wanted to know what could have happened. And like many cases, everybody was speculating. So let's get into the more common theories before we dive into the more controversial theories. And the first of which being that Elisa didn't willingly go into the water tank, that somebody had put her there or forced her there. Initially, it was reported that the lid to the water tank was closed when Elisa was discovered within the tank. And many people speculated that it would be nearly impossible for Elisa to climb into the tank herself and then close the lid after her. People thought that Elisa must have been put into the tank, forced into the tank, or pushed into the tank, and then the lid was closed after she went inside. Another circulating theory around the case was in relation to the hotel's dark history. Many people believed that a paranormal entity or a demonic possession could have played a role in the death of Elisa Lam. They referenced her strange behavior in the elevator footage, claiming it seemed as though she was possessed or under attack by an entity and that that had been the reason behind her death. People also once again talked about the fact that in that video it seemed as though the elevator doors wouldn't close and they thought that that was some sort of paranormal activity caught on camera. Which leads into another theory that Elisa Lam was playing the paranormal game, the elevator game, and wound up going to another dimension, an alternate reality, and dying. There was also another theory that the LAPD or the government had something to do with it and were covering it up. And things to do with that got a lot stranger in the coming days after Elisa's body was discovered. A few days after the discovery of Elisa's body, there was a tuberculosis outbreak in the Skid Row community particularly, and people within the hotel had to be tested 
for tuberculosis. The name of the tests was LAM-ELISA, spelt exactly like Elisa Lamb, but backwards. And immediately people started feeding this into the government cover-up conspiracy, thinking that maybe Elisa was sent there to take a toll on the homeless community, kind of take out the homeless community. The reason that people started speculating that Elisa might have been sent to take out the homeless community was because the University of BC where she studied has a well-known research center for tuberculosis. So people thought that there's no way it could have been a coincidence that just days after the discovery of her body, Skid Row has a tuberculosis outbreak and the testing is her name backwards. Another eerie realization that led people to believe there was more to this was the shocking similarities between the Elisa Lam case and the movie Dark Water. The movie was originally produced in Japan 10 years before the passing of Elisa Lam and then was remade in 2005 for the US. The movie was about a mother and a daughter who move into a rundown hotel and the little girl wears a red jacket similar to what Elisa Lam was wearing in the elevator footage. At one point of the film, the water comes out of the faucet and appears to be dark just as the water was prior to the discovery of Elisa Lam, but even eerier, the little girl passes away by climbing into the hotel's water tank and drowning, wearing a red jacket similar to Elisa. So people wondered whether or not the death of Elisa Lam might have been inspired by this or if it was all just a coincidence. The other theories were that perhaps Elisa was under the influence. Either drugs or alcohol could have played a role because it seemed as though she wasn't totally there. There was also the theory that it did have to do with her bipolar disorder and that perhaps she was in the midst of a manic episode. But then there was the theory that pretty much ruined somebody's life. As I mentioned before, there was the theory right off the bat that Elisa had been killed, that there was no way she put herself in there. And so people online began digging through anything they could to try and find a possible suspect in what they believed to be the killing of Elisa Lam. And that's when they found death metal artist Pablo Vergara, known as Morbid. People found that on YouTube, he'd stayed in the hotel and they ran with it. His music and music videos were very dark and disturbing to many, as I'd assume since his name is Morbid and he was an easy target to point the finger on. People started spreading this like wildfire and news ran quick that he was a possible suspect in the killing of Elisa Lam. People online began harassing him, telling him to confess and they knew exactly what he'd done to her. But see, here's the thing. He'd stayed at the Cecil Hotel for three days in 2012, a year before Elisa stayed in the hotel and he was in Mexico at the time of her disappearance and passing. Meaning not only was he not there in the same year as her, but he wasn't even in America. And he claims that he'd never heard of her until all of the nasty messages and articles about him began circulating. The online detectives would wind up getting his social medias deleted, and even though they were deeply disturbing to many, he didn't even want to create anymore. He didn't want to be here anymore. And he said that even though he sang about those things, he'd never acted out on it, but he hasn't made music since. And one thing that I can say is his music style definitely wasn't up my alley. His content creation wasn't something that I would enjoy, but to accuse somebody of murder when they weren't even in the country at the time and they weren't even at the hotel at the same time is really, really disheartening to me because that is a massive accusation with no evidence other than his dark music and the fact that he'd stayed there a year prior. He thinks that staying at the hotel has a lot to do with what happened to him because he thinks that once you stay at the Cecil Hotel, bad things happen to you. But let's get into what really happened to Elisa Lam. As 
As the investigation continued, it became very apparent to investigators and those involved in the case that the behavior of Elisa in the days leading up to her disappearance was very off. As I mentioned, she had to get moved out of her shared room because of the behavior she was displaying to her roommates, writing them nasty little letters, telling them to leave and get out and placing them on the beds and also requiring a password. She was acting very odd in their words. The manager called her behavior disruptive and recalls on an instance where Elisa came running down to the lobby, threw her hands in the air and said, I'm crazy, but so is LA. Now, despite people believing that Elisa must have been under the influence, they quickly learned that there was nothing in her system despite her prescription medications. However, they quickly noticed that the level of prescription medication in her system was under the prescription level meaning that Elisa was undertaking her prescription medications at the time. Elisa's sister would later share with detectives that she had a history of undertaking or not taking her prescription medications, and when she would do so, she would become delusional, paranoid, see and hear things that were not there. They learned that this was actually something that she would have been hospitalized for in the past, and when she was in one of these episodes, she would hear voices that were not present and feel as though someone or something was after her. Her sister said that in these instances, she would in fact try to hide from whomever or whatever she felt was after her, which makes a lot of sense in relation to the hotel footage of Elisa leading up to her passing. This led detectives to believe that perhaps in a psychotic episode, Due to perhaps undertaking her medication, Elisa was paranoid, felt as though someone was after her, perhaps may have even heard voices and retrieved to the water tank to hide. And then once she got inside of it, perhaps the reason she was naked is because in order to stay afloat, she started undressing in order to lighten the load. On June 21st, 2013, they ruled the death of Elisa Lamb an accident due to drowning with bipolar disorder as a contributing factor. But this confused so many people from the outside looking in. If it had been an accident, how was the lid closed when Elisa was found inside? And why was the elevator appearing to stay open if there wasn't something strange going on? Well, both can actually be explained. When Elisa was within the elevator, she was pressing a ton of buttons at once, one of which was an elevator hold button, which would hold the elevator doors open for two minutes. The button was called a hold door button for those of you who might be wondering and it was essentially to help those who were slower coming in or bringing things in that needed the door to stay open. So since she pressed it, it appeared as though the elevator doors weren't closing but that was just because they were under a two minute hold. And it turns out the lid was a miscommunication by police. When Santiago Lopez, the maintenance worker at the time, spoke to the court, he said the hatch was open when he found her and that the LAPD made a mistake by reporting otherwise. So the Lamb family filed suit against the hotel on September 19th, 2013, as they believed it was a wrongful death based on negligence on the hotel's part. They felt like the hotel should have done a lot more to keep guests from the hotel roof and that the water tanks themselves should have been locked and secured. This was also not just due to somebody falling in, but potential contamination if somebody's able to contaminate the water that people are drinking and brushing their teeth with and showering with. But the hotel argued back saying that they did have an employees only locked and alarm secured door leading to the roof, but that the fire escape was necessary in case of emergency or in case of a fire. And that it wasn't their fault that she'd taken the fire escape to get up there. Her family said that they should have known that something wasn't right with Elisa and made a report to authorities or contacted the right people. But once again, the hotel argued back that since it's centered close to Skid Row, they get a lot of what they would describe as oddballs or people who are displaying strange behaviors or perhaps under the influence. So if they reported every single one, they'd be making reports continuously. However, many people disputed that if the water tank was open at the time of LAPD's investigation, when they brought the dogs up on the roof, shouldn't they have noticed the open lid of the water tank and went and investigated? 
and LAPD just simply didn't check the water tanks at the time of being on the roof. Despite bringing the dogs up, the dogs didn't catch a scent near the water tanks. I guess that they just checked the roof and they never checked the water tanks, which they definitely should have. Though it is agreed that the LAPD should have checked the water tanks, they claim no conspiracy is associated with this case. And the wrongful death case from Elisa Lamb's family was in fact dismissed. So you're probably wondering after all of this, the dark history and the publicly broadcasted case of Elisa Lamb, what is the future of the Cecil Hotel? as a beautiful vintage European style hotel catering to young international travelers like Lisa Lamb from Vancouver, Canada. Her body found in one of the hotel's four water towers that feeds into the hotel's taps. She may have been there for weeks as hundreds of hotel guests unknowingly continued to drink and use the water. The hotel would not speak to CNN despite repeated attempts. This is the latest chapter in the hotel's dark storied history, says LA crime novelist and journalist Denise Hamilton. On January 1st, 2017, the Cecil Hotel permanently closed their doors and sold. And the future of the Cecil Hotel is that the Cecil Hotel is going to be half a luxury hotel and half low income housing. In my personal opinion, there's a really dark ambiance surrounding the hotel in and of itself. You guys can definitely do more research into it. There are some dark cases that I didn't bring up here um, just because they are quite triggering, but there was a lot of stuff that went on in the hotel. So I'm very curious to see how the Cecil Hotel, the luxury side of the Cecil building that's gonna be the luxury Cecil Hotel will play out. I feel as though as of right now, the only people I could see who will be willing to stay there are people who A, have no idea of its history and are looking for a place to stay in the area, or B, people who have seen the Netflix docuseries who know of the hotel's history and are interested in going there for either paranormal experiences, research purposes, or for the thrill of it. But I'd love to know what you guys think of the future of the Cecil Hotel as well. It's a very, very tragic case with a very dark history to it, and I would love to know what you guys think is going on with the Cecil Hotel. Why right from the beginning, it was surrounded by death, serial killers, people taking their own lives, and then the disappearance and death of Elisa Lamb. I'd love to know, do you guys think there's some sort of demonic entity there? Do you think the hotel in and of itself is cursed? What do you think the reason behind all of this is? And what are your thoughts on the Elisa Lamb case? Do you believe that it was accidental drowning or do you think there was more to it? Definitely, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And that is it for today's video. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed, but you do enjoy my videos, I would absolutely love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, <laughs> I love you guys. Bye guys.